Hi, greetings and welcome. Today is 27th of May 2021. Our second wave of the corona epidemic is slowly going down. I thought today I'll talk about the corona virus and children, COVID and children. There is a lot of anticipation and anxiety about the next wave, which is supposed to affect children mostly. So I'll take this opportunity to talk about that. Now let's start with the pregnant woman. If you are somebody who is in the middle of pregnancy and gets a COVID infection, don't panic because the coronavirus is not known to attack the baby deformed or cause any other problems. The most risk is for the mother. She might go into premature labor and have a preterm baby. But the baby won't be deformed or have any anatomic abnormalities because of the COVID infection. Next comes the mother who is closer to term and gets a COVID infection either just before labor or before a C-section. Again, don't panic. You might find all your doctors, attendants, anesthetists, etc. wearing PPE and you might wonder whether the baby is also at high risk. It is not known that the COVID infection or the corona infection travels vertically. That means mother to child. The transmission could occur if the baby were to be exposed to the mother's breath or other people's breath who are already carriers. So that's why they ask the baby not to be isolated from the mother. In fact, they encourage mother-baby bonding by kangaroo care. That means putting the baby on the mother's chest. Within a few minutes of birth, mother should be wearing the mask and she should be encouraged to continue with breastfeeding. If possible, the baby can be kept six feet away from the mother at times when the mother is not breastfeeding, but during breastfeeding, she's supposed to sanitize her hands wear the mask and continue breastfeeding and continue to take care of the baby. If by chance the mother does not feel well, needs much more medical attention, then obviously the baby needs to be taken care of by some other family member or a caretaker and they need to be made sure that they are not infective or carrying the virus and they can take care of the baby normally. Then comes the small baby or toddler. If some people in the family have become COVID positive, and the baby is well and has not been tested, don't panic because the babies usually do not have any serious problems. Majority of them, 95% of them don't have any problems. Very rarely they could progress to a mild, moderate or severe symptoms. So the care would be wearing mask, keeping the you know air movement normal by opening the windows, etc. And the person who is tested positive could be isolated in a room. If it happens that the many members of the family are positive and few members are not affected, then if they are elderly, they could be isolated to prevent them getting infection from the others. But the baby can't be done like that. So the baby can be cared naturally by the parents, but they should be wearing masks as far as possible. Then comes the child. If the child is tested positive, then again, majority of the times they have very mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. The mild symptoms could be, you know, fever, headache, body pain, cough, vomiting, stomach pain, rash, etc. etc. Commonest is the fever and cough. So again, we should not panic because these are all mild symptoms and like I mentioned before in the earlier video, monitoring of saturation, temperature, breathing rate, etc. will help. So the important thing is to be confident and take care of the child as if it was just like any other regular infection. Because children are known to get common infections throughout their first few years of life. So what we would have done in the past, we will do the same thing. If they have fever, we will give them fever medications. If they have headache, again, we give some medication. Obviously, you need to take the opinion of your family doctor or your regular pediatrician. If they are vomiting, then we give vomiting medications. 
if the vomitings are happening too many times, like three, four, five times, even after you give the medications, then that is a cause for alarm. Or if the fever is continuing despite giving medications or the headache is getting worse despite giving medications, then that is a cause for alarm. Otherwise, a headache which responds to medication and only comes up again after a six to eight hours of the medication being wearing out, then that is probably nothing so serious because most of the children who we see with COVID positive are having headache, body pain, fever and cough. So we continue to monitor the temperature, saturation, pulse rate and breathing rate. How do we you know, uh, calc or monitor the breathing rate? Usually we try to do it if it is a very small baby or a toddler. When they are sleeping, that is the best time you can check their breathing rate. And how do we as pediatricians monitor it without touching them is to look the stomach. If the stomach is going up and down, up, down, that is one breath. Again down, second breath, third, fourth, like that. So a baby who is like less than six months of age, usually their breathing will be about 40 to 50. If they are slightly older, you know, that will be around again 40. If they are less than five years of age, they would be like 30, more than that, 25 to 30. So these are the upper end of the normal range. If it is more than that, what we do is we Make sure to check it again after half an hour or one hour to see if the breathing is still high or not. And then we check to see if the baby is looking well or not, the color of the baby is good or not, whether the baby has any temperature. These are the ways we know that the baby is well or unwell. If at any time you feel worried and you are not sure how your baby is, please immediately try to reach out to your doctor and take an opinion. And. Uh, <coughs> Also, I would like to mention that a toddler or an older child, if they are having only mild symptoms, like which I mentioned, without any breathing difficulty, then they need no testing and no treatment other than the treatment for the symptoms. Now, if on monitoring of the saturation, if it is 95 and above, that is normal, no need for any treatment specific for COVID. If it is going below 95, 94, 93, 92 like that, then that is to be taken as a warning sign that something is not completely right and maybe there is a deterioration. Again, don't panic because you have time to reach out to a doctor or a hospital, nearest hospital, where if you go, they'll probably reassess your child and make sure there is nothing else that is causing a problem because even in COVID times, there can be other infections, common infections that used to happen before coronavirus struck us. They might be the cause of the problem, not COVID. And they will do the tests and probably start treatment. And then maybe if the saturation is not so bad, they might send you home to watch at home because the intention is not to admit them directly to intensive care. They don't need intensive care immediately. Either they can be monitored at home if the family is good and they are confident or they can be monitored in a COVID care center. So don't panic. The most important thing is not to panic and seek attention from the doctors as and when required. Thank you, be safe and be happy.